Hey folks, there might be a bit of background noise. Don't mind that. It's winter. Four days of snow on the ground. Never seen the likes of it in five years. I know people don't want to hear that. It was getting a lot of snow, but it's crazy. I never seen that much snow. It was like two inches on the ground. That's more than we had in like five years. <laughs> so we're live streaming and we don't know what's going on. Comments are to the left. Every night, usually 7 or 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we live stream. Hang on. There you go. That was fast. What the hell was that all about? Who am I to complain? So the heater's running in the background. You're going to hear that. I had to put extra heat on. Hi, Red Button Studio, Albert, and the first couple of minutes, anybody who's not familiar with these live streams, I say hi to as many people as I can. Just passing through. Nuts for Art. Hi, Rinnerell Stetson, Zip Free, Red Button, Albert, Piano, Cats Alive. Moments, nothing more. Bob, Julie, Penny, just passing through. Aqua, Kerry, Missing Sky, Craig, Broken Ass Islander, poor bugger. John Townsend, Standing Foot, Irene Rell, Michael Hand, Double Hoop Nation, Brian Schulterman, Catcher K, Diver Dude. Pretty darn cool, Dana. I got a whole lot in. Cats Alive, DC. Basic Data, Matthews. Wow, I got a lot of people here tonight. Holy cow. It's very good. Very good, very good, very good. And, and I got 15 people on my stream. What the hell is that all about? Oh, well, show must go on. Not about that. It's about being easier to shoot the video. It's pretty pretty bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen that low of a number. Oh, well, such is life. Let's get on with it, shall we? So, it's not that I've been ignoring New Mexico. It's just that I've been gathering up information on it and watching it, holding my breath. Uh, New Mexico is an event. For anybody that's not uh, aware of what's going on here, they have an underground deposit, uh, depository where they're putting nuclear waste. Now, they say the release, and I'll jump back and forth, they say the release is plutonium, but it's left over from the production. So, anything that's left over from production is uranium 238. Okay? Uranium 238. And it's contaminated with americium, plutonium. Um, okay, I can't remember now. Neptunium's radioactive particles is common to see that uh, as a contaminant. This is stuff that's left over from the enrichment of uranium. And so about 90, whatever it is, 99% or something is left over. Of it's called uranium-238. It has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. And Mama Knox has a video up on her site. There's a link below to it. And I finally remembered to add her into my uh, great people list, which is shocking. She should have been there a long time ago. And it shows the smoke release from Fukushima, or from New Mexico. Carl is bad. It's hemorrhaging out. Okay, that's radioactive smoke. Everything is touching is radioactive. All that site is now radioactive. And then you've seen the cover picture for this particular video is a dispersion model from mainstream TV, which is what I've done the video about, the last two minute video about. And that's the dispersal model headed right up to Oklahoma. And where they went to the Oklahoma University and they got a chemistry professor who says, hey, it's just like eating bananas, no worry, you're getting more radiation than you would when you're eating bananas. But if you eat a banana, you off-gas the same amount of potassium-40, which has nothing to do with this equation, by the way. Because we're talking about uranium, neptunium, plutonium. We're talking about the contamination of the most toxic stuff imaginable that's went to the chain reaction, which makes changes all the properties of the alphas, the gammas, the betas, changes the neutrons and the x-rays, makes them extraordinarily hideous. The release 
is was ongoing for a couple of days before anybody even found out about it. And they had the nerve now to come out and say, oh, it's one-tenth of a x-ray. So it's a milliram. Well, if you, in, if you get an x-ray, as soon as you walk away, that's the end of that. As soon as you turn it off, that's the end of it. You ingest a hot particle, it never goes away. It's in your body till the end of time. It's cancer. Guaranteed. No back doors to it. And so for them, anybody to come out and equate it with bananas, right? They, they deserve a slap up the side of the head. And anybody that comes out and equates it with an x-ray deserves a slap up the side of the head and is an outrageous lawyer and should be shit on at every opportunity possible. And that's what we do here. Because that's uh, the worst kind of fabrication imaginable. Now, the video I done today, I actually spent a lot of time typing and I didn't use very much of it. So let me read off what I should have done earlier. And I didn't. Sue me. It's hard to make a two-minute video the way I make them sometimes. That's probably eight hours work. The editing, the rendering. It's just a lot of work. And I love it. Because you're trying to get out a message. You're trying to, trying to reach a different type of people. And I kind of goofed up a few times in that. But I wanted to get it out before 6 o'clock so I can post this one. And I actually made a mistake. I should have just left it and finished it after and then posted it. Done a little tightening up on it. It's a new technique. I'll get around to it the next time. That won't happen. New Mexico nuclear waste site is releasing massive amounts of bananas, according to Dr. John Nail. Some pretty scary stuff. Have you ever been scared by a banana? Have you ever had a banana chase you down and beat you up, mug you? harass you, sexually assault you. Well, you can forget about that one. I don't really want to know. At the Oklahoma City University, Dr. John Neal was probably behind it, hid away in the dark. News Channel 4 posted a story called Could a leak at New Mexico nuclear waste site reach the Sooner State, Oklahoma, where they interviewed Dr. John Neal at the Oklahoma City University. He's a chemist. Surely Oklahoma City University must have one nuclear professor, right? Surely. They got all kinds of names there with nuclear physicists as a, a degree, so surely you could have went to one of them instead of the chemist, the banana man. That knows what they were talking about. So why did Ed Donkey, well, it's not Donkey, I just added the extra K in there, whatever, from KFOR News Channel 4, why did he seek out a chemistry professor at Oklahoma City University. Why didn't he go get a nuclear professor? Why don't any of these ever get a nuclear professor? Why do you always got to go get the Ken Buesler's Woods Hole Instagraphic Institution who says potassium-40 or cesium turns into potassium-40, cesium-137 will just turn into potassium-40, 1,500 miles of the sea. Uh, and it's the same thing with people like Jay Collin from University of Victoria. He's a chemist. Uh, it's the same for a lot of these uh, spokespersons. They're chemists. You know, like a nuclear scientist is one of the most rarest, rarest creatures out there that can actually talk. I think most of them can't talk or something. They all like sign language. Ah! <laughs> Let me keep going. I know I just screwed all this up. So Dr. John Nails at Oklahoma City University demonizes bananas with a fabricated statement that most people will get more radiation exposure from eating a banana than they ever will from the New Mexico nuclear dump site. That's outrageous. What the hell could possibly go through his mind to say something like that? You eat a banana, you off-gas the same amount of potassium-40 as a banana had. It's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with this equation. Bananas, right, uh, you know, well, I guess they can hurt you if you do certain things with it. Like, if you eat a banana, it's got 12 becquels a second decay of potassium-40 uh, in it, and you off-gas the exact same amount of potassium-40... Yes, your farts have potassium-40 in it, but that's something different altogether. It's not what I'm talking about, but it's true. You can't get more potassium-40 in your body, or in wood, or in rocks, or in clothes, or dishes, than is already there, because our bodies and even these objects regulate potassium-40 like a thermostat, like the cruise control on a baby car reach. It's homostasis which means that it regulates. Look it up, H-O-M-E-O-S-T-A-S-I-S. -E -S -S. It's a well-known phenomenon. 
and that it works for everything out there. So if you had paint and it was full of potassium-40, you put it on an object that had potassium-40, you still can't get any more into that object. It has its limit. And I used words off-gassing so, so you can kind of visualize, visualize <laughs> that part. <laughs> anyway, um, so why did Ed Downey at News Channel 4 ask one of the scientists at Oklahoma City University the same question instead of Dr. John Nails? And why is Dr. John Nails demonizing ban the bananas? You know, wh why... Is he so wound up about bananas? Why did Channel 4 have to ask a fear-mongering banana hater like Dr. John Nails? Because it's obvious that man hates bananas with a passion, right? Why else would he throw them into the equation? When you see a fire at a repository for nuclear waste, and he mentioned bananas, you have to realize it's not full of bananas. It's full of brutal radioactive uranium-238, okay? And it's got a half-life, like I said earlier, of 4.5 billion years, but that's times 10. All radioactive isotopes, as a rule of thumb, decay by 10. So like strontium-90 uh, or CC-137 with a 30-year half-life is times 10 is 300-year life. That's the better way to look at it. Uh, ba, ba, ba. You know, I bet you if you went over to Oklahoma City University site and typed in nuclear or anything, you would find all kinds of experts on nuclear. And so why didn't Channel 4 talk to somebody sensible? Why did they have to put up a dummy who wants to talk about bananas, right? Because that's the stupidest thing. Can you imagine how stupid he must be feeling the night after giving that interview? He's probably home drinking himself to death, smearing himself in whipped cream and bananas, and hiding in his van and parking lots. That's probably what he's doing. Because somebody who would actually come out and try to sell that, why are they at the university? Should all those students be getting their money back? Should all the students have to get recertified? Of course they should. Because they have been contaminated by uh, banana brains at Oklahoma University. It's a very strange phenomenon. When you think about the dispersal map, if you look at that in the video, and there's a link below to it, if you look at that, it's shaped like a banana. Distinctly at the bottom of the, the plume. So the plume, you know, they tried to say it was a salt, a truck went down with salt and caught fire, and it's no big deal. But they can't get in there for a few weeks. And the reason they can't get in there is because that smoke is radioactive. And so everything it touches becomes radioactive, extraordinarily radioactive. We're talking about what's left over and they're trying to bury it deep underground. They can never get back into it. In the future, they might be able to build robots to get in there, but it's probably having a chain reaction down there right now. If you had a detonation or explosion and barrels ruptured, you got to think about the barrels... What they put into those barrels, the neptunium, the americium, the uranium, the plutonium, if that mixes together, it'll cause its own chain reaction. That's why most of the tanks at Hanford are leaking, right? It's because you put all this stuff into the tank, it settles into the bottom. <coughs> Ooh, where'd that come from? And so that's, that's what's going on. You can't put this stuff anywhere. This is why he dumped it in the ocean so much. Uh, and this facility was an experimental facility, 100% experimental. It had a 10,000-year license. So I was just like, yeah, have at her, man. You're good to go. We're not going to bother you. We're not going in there. <laughs> We're not, you can't get them to go in there and do anything. You know, they got a billion tons of uranium-238. And they spent nine years firing 2.5 million rounds of uranium-238 in Afghanistan and Iraq. So these are all dirty bombs. All that stuff coming out of there, Al-Qaeda can go down to New Mexico, walk around with a Geiger counter, scrape up a bunch of this really toxic stuff, because they're suicidal, right? So they don't care, right? The government pays them good money anyway, right? 
And so they can scoop it all up, put it into a van or something, blow it up, and now you got a dirty bomb. Not as good as the bullets you fired in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? I hate to see uh, Dr. Neil sucking on one of those suckers for a while. You know, the soldiers in the tanks down there, they were sitting on, on the shelves. Think about the Abram tanks. is shooting 10 pounds of solid uranium-238. It's not tipped. It's not coated. Okay? You can look up my video on my site of Dr. Doug Rourke, the Pentagon's expert, talking about it. He'll set you straight. This stuff is supposed to be locked up in the sarcophagus till the end of time. They can't build it. They never could build it. They don't even try. They're trying to just bury it under the ground and run away. Ah, they got 15 years worth down there somewhere. It's the biggest law imaginable. And if you don't take back your country, if you don't stand up and make a noise, if you don't actually participate, then how do you think things are going to change? Do you think my lone voice out here in the wilderness that's marginalized dramatically because I pick on every country out there. I don't pull any punches. So I got everybody trying to censor me. They censored a video of mine the other night from CNN. Of course, I put it back up <laughs> because they only censored it in America. But I had a legal order. They tried to take down my video because of the Benghazi. Benghazi um, investigations cropped back up and I had a video about it and they, they didn't say that it was copyright they didn't say anything they just tried to knock it down right this was a legal order through courts and Google decided to block it in America I re-uploaded it after formatting it so the Americans can see it too and I don't care if they put a strike on my account I just don't care you know I'll take the strike because I'm not going to be bullied i'm not going to be unfairly targeted like that and shut up about it you can knock me off the site i'm still going to show back up i'll go somewhere else that's not going to change anything you don't got a right to do that to me you got a right to shut your fucking mouths and stay out of my face that's what you got a right to do you got no right to target me you're a coward you're getting paid to target me you're the lowest form of life out there you don't even tell your parents what you do. You won't tell your friends what you do. You pretend that you're a big shot, that you're something special, that you're cool to your friends and your cronies. But you know what you're doing is evil by censoring people. It's hideously evil. It's unconstitutional. It's against the Bill of Rights. It's against the Magna Carters and all the other countries out there that are doing it repeatedly to me. You're not going to win. You can't stop the truth. You shouldn't stop the truth. This is unbelievably disgusting to censor my site like you're doing. My last two videos got censored heavily. 13,000 subscribers. You know, I've lost 3,800 subscribers on my site in one go because of YouTube. Just jacked 3,800 subscribers off my site. They were all the commenters. They were all the viewers and the people who shared my video and I had to build it all up again. They jacked... Probably about 5 million views off my site at the same time. They just de-indexed me from everywhere at the same time. So there's no pages out there. Uh, but it's the only venue out there with streaming. Google's got the patent on buffering. So there's no competition out there that's going to work properly. Unless you want to pay a big sums of money down front. Like they, they totally destroyed everything. You can get 1,300 comments tonight in my comment section. That's not unusual. I can't reply to these people because Google doesn't have that there. These people have to fill out captures to comment on my video regularly every three or four comments. But they comment on my site all the time. I put them in a list of where they're allowed to comment, knock their socks off. They still got to fill out the captures. So it's not about enhancing the conversation. It's not about having a conversation. It's about stopping the conversation. 100%. There was, like, YouTube worked perfectly for six years, and you can comment any comment. What's the sense of having 1,300 comments if people can't come back and answer somebody, or talk to somebody, or reply to somebody, or have a debate with somebody in the comment section? What the fuck is the sense of that? Why would you do that? What's the friggin' gain by that? How is that good for a social networking sharing site? 
How the fuck does that benefit anybody by doing that to us? How? It doesn't. How does it benefit by having rogue governments out there in Canada and in the States and everywhere else going around at will censoring people? Using sophisticated, you know, software that they're using against dissent in all countries. It's the same software. They're all using the same fucking thing on everybody. All the governments are using it. They're all good with it. And they just don't even care. They're getting paid. So even if you're not worth censoring, they're going to censor you because they got paid for it. It's the sickest, dementest thing on the planet. Right, the tech people out there have fucked us. Big time. Worse than bananas. The tech people out there have destroyed the ability of New Mexico to have an opportunity to get out of the fucking way. How can you show big plumes on TV and say it's like getting an x-ray when an x-ray got nothing to do with this? How can you show those big plumes on TV and have some dummy from the University of Oklahoma, John Neal, come out and say, oh, you get more radiation from a banana when you off gas the same amount when you eat a banana, as in that banana. But the fact is that the banana's got nothing to do with the radiation that's coming from New Mexico. And it's a massive release. It's a continuous release, and they can never get fucking in there. They can't fill it up with water to put it out. They might. But then they got to keep it filled up with water till the end of time. Where's all that water going to end up to? What happens if they have a build up there and have a detonation? What happens if that stuff becomes chain reaction, melts down, hits a water table and blows the whole fucking place up? Right? That's all real. Nobody can get in there unless you go get the homeless, like you do in Fukushima, and murder them. Just because you don't die today don't mean it's not murder, okay? Just because those people around New Mexico don't drop dead doesn't mean they didn't get murdered six months down the road or a couple of years down the road or five years down the road because they inhaled these radioactive hot particles from these fires. At what point? I mean, this is the limit. This is the point where you stand up. This is the point. You know, because if you don't stand up, they're not going to do nothing. If you don't stand up, they're not even going to try. If you don't fucking raise your voices, they don't care. Even if you do raise the voices, you say they don't care. But if you don't raise it, they have no reason to even try to shun you or block you or marginalize you or misrepresent the facts. That's what they've done for the first few days till somebody figured out what was going on there. And then they come out and said, oh, it's like a banana. Oh, it's like an x-ray. Like someone said that to me in an interview, in a real interview, it's going to be hard not, not to smack them in the mouth for that. They're going to get told. Why can't a single media out there go get a nuclear scientist and ask them? Not that we trust him. But why can't they go do that? Because he'll be accountable. It's harder for him to lie. It's easy for a chemist to lie because he's a fucking idiot. Because he's a pro-nuclear lobbyist. He's a hideous fucker when you look at him. Right, you can see him, he's shifty eyes the whole fucking nine yards. There's nothing honest about him. They come out and say bananas. Like I like to shove a banana up each his nose and his ears and his other orifices. And I wouldn't have any kind of pity when I'm doing it. To me, these are not real people. They're not like humans like me or you. They don't have emotions like me or you. They don't have responsibilities like me and you. And he's there teaching children. He's there teaching your loved ones. Right, you got to get him editor. You got to call up that university and write that university and say, "I want that the fuck out. Get that the fuck out of the classes." I'd rather have a pedophile in there than that fucker, because he's going to teach my kid to be a monster. Legally, the university's not going to hold him accountable, and that's a religious university, and they got no morals. They got no high ground here. Why are they doing that to us? If they're supposed to be the honest ones, why don't they give it a try? Why would you put Dr. John Neal on a television program anyway? Why wouldn't you go to the many nuclear scientists in that area? How fucking hard could that be? Right? Wouldn't that be the moral and ethical thing to do? Wouldn't that be the, like the correct thing to do? Wouldn't that make like wouldn't that make you like the, the normal person that you went out and that's what you done? 
Because that's your job? Because you got access to these people? That's what I'm talking about Channel 4. Why would they do that? Why did they put a banana in a dispersal map? Right? And then talk about bananas a minute later in the conversation. You see how that works? Why did they talk about plutonium when it's your the bloody thing is full of uranium-238? That's contaminated with plutonium. Plutonium is like, at best, 2% of whatever's on that site. The rest of it's uranium-238. Because the 2% is just the combinations of neptuniums, americiums, and other byproducts of the nuclear waste, the nuclear enrichment. Why don't they build a sarcophagus before they create all of this stuff? Why do they create all this stuff and then spend 50 years trying to figure out a way to get rid of it when it's the most toxic stuff on the planet? That's not what they say they do. That's not what they claim they can do. They claim they can store it safely. Why are they putting it in a hole in the ground? What the fuck has that got to do with a sarcophagus? That's not in a sarcophagus. The, the licensing agreement says you're going to lock it up so that no isotopes can escape into the environment and you do the complete opposite where you drop it down in a hole where you have the nuclear pro lobbying group they're working, making fortunes, and then run away and blame bananas. Do you got any idea how hideous this really is? What kind of monsters the University of Oklahoma actually is for allowing that creature, Dr. John Neal, to keep his job, right? Can you imagine the students watching this video and finding out what he's fucking really like? And finding out what this is really like and confronting him, putting those videos up on YouTube? That's what should be happening. That's the only way that we can deal with these people you got the head of the NRC, Allison McFarlane, saying there's nothing from Fukushima came to America. When America got 137 showing dispersions for 40 days, blanketing the entire northern hemisphere, the entire bloody thing. And Allison McFarlane, no, well, there's no models. No, no, Swiss got no models. Of course they do. We've seen them here many times. There's no models out there. There's no danger. You had 300 times the iodine, the background radiation could be up to 9,000 potassium-40 in your drinking water. You drink it, you off gas, 9,000 becquels per second of potassium-40. You can't put any more potassium-40 in your body. But you can't, if you, if you were drinking... If you were drinking uh, plutonium or cesium or strontium or the uranium-238 at those Beckwells, you're done. You're going to drop dead of a heart attack within minutes drinking that much. Right? And your body will just, you can keep adding uranium-238 till you died right on the spot, till your organs started melting, till you squatted down and pooped them out like they did at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right? The women were known for that. In their last moments, as they were walking away, they would squat, poop out their uteruses, and then they would fall down and die. Because it melted their organs. That's a fact, okay? I can't stand the lies anymore. I can't stand the misrepresentation. I can't stand the fabrication. I can't stand the word banana. Don't you fucking say it. In this equation, because... If you look up E equals MC square, and you can show me where it says add a fucking banana, okay, I'll take my friggin' site down. That's how simple this is. I'll take it down. If you can show me an E equals MC square where the words banana appears, okay? Because you can't. Because it doesn't. Because it couldn't. I can go down that road, but I'm not going to. Because it ain't. You can't have bananas in a nuclear equation so why did the university of oklahoma put it in there because there's a serious issue and they're covering it up because there's a serious issue and they can't come out and tell you anything because they're pro-lobby they won't get any money they won't get to do any peer review studies with your tax dollars not the good ones anyway Right? You know, 4,800 peer-reviewed academic studies every day that are locked up in the ivory tower that you pay for at your institutions that Wiley, Springer, and Elsevier gets the copyright for free 
And not one of them, not one, is how to make a sarcophagus to put these nuclear creatures in. How come? How, how, how hard could it be when you've got all these universities every day, 4,800 peer review academic studies, three a minute, 1,440 minutes in a day. I probably made a few mistakes in my math, but just 3,000 page average, with 1,000 hours average, academic studies published, three a minute. And so can we take those universities, those institutions, those scientists, professors that we paid for, that we fund, and build a sarcophagus? I know it's a novel idea. I know you're like, Dana, oh, Dana. Don't go too far ahead of yourself, boy. They got to do stuff for the nuclear industry so they can kill the rest of the planet. So they can destroy country after country with their radiation. Why they live a fable that they're not going to get affected. That their children won't be affected. That their loved ones, that their friends and their children won't be affected. That their families won't be affected. That their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their nephews, their nieces. They're inbred fucking selves are not going to get affected that they're above it that their students in their class won't get affected that they don't watch every day at the University of Oklahoma and wonder are their students going to be poisoned because they didn't say to stay home for a week because these plumes are coming over our heads right where's the moral high ground how hard is it when we give you so much money every year to these institutions, you can't do your freaking job one single time. How can that be so hard to do? Why is that so difficult for you fuckers, you stupid, insignificant maggots, to do your job for a change? Why the fuck should we care about you? Why the fuck shouldn't we just run you down on the side of the fucking rope? Boop, boop. Whoops, i never seen anybody there. Next time we fucking see ya. Why should we give a fuck about you? When all you do is lie and manipulate and steal and marginalize and demonize and throw fucking bananas into an equation. I stuff a banana down your throat to you try to do it to me. I had an, I ever has an interview with you fuckers down the road be taking bananas with me? And I'll jump on you and I'll stab you to fucking death with a fucking banana. Because that's what you deserve. You know, if we had a real justice system, you'd be in jail for what you're saying and what you're doing and what you're propagating and what you're teaching the children. How the fuck are you any different than a pedophile? How are you any different than a monster? How is the University of Oklahoma's, you know, Dr. John Neal, any different than a monster? To sit there on TV and say something like that. How is Channel 4 any different than a monster by putting up with that? By not correcting, by not saying... Well, hang on a second now. If I eat a banana, don't I off-gas the same amount of potassium-40? And the professor say, yeah, that's true. And you say, well, what the fuck did you put it in the equation for? Well, I was just fun you. And you wonder why I swear and get angry sometimes. Why I'm here every night. Why I, I spend eight hours to make a two-minute video like I did tonight. In the hopes that I could break through the paradigm of some of these dummies... And give them a conscience. Or just because I'm bored. Do you think I do this because I'm bored? You got another thing coming. Do you think I'm doing this because I want to do this? You got a friggin' another thing coming. Do you got any idea how hard this is to do? How hard this is to keep track? And then if I make a simple mistake, that'll get used to bludgeon me till the end of time. That'll be used to demonize me till the end of time. That'll be used to attack me. That'll be used to ridicule me. That'll be, you know, constantly thrown back in your face because you made a simple mistake. That's insignificant in the context of a full hour. What about the whole rest of the whole hour when I was dead on, perfectly accurate the entire time? Why, why shift through all my videos to find a couple of inconsistencies and come in and attack me? Because that's all you got. Because you're hoping that'll work. Because you're hoping that might demoralize me. Right? When you know it won't. But you get paid for it. The money's good. All you got to do is go and fuck people over, including yourself, your friends, and your loved ones. And you buy into that. That's why Dr. John Neal exists, because he's a pathetic bag of shit. 
He's a traitor to humanity, a traitor to his students, an embarrassment to his institution, to his academics. Why is he even in the equation? The banana actually fits, fits the equation better than he does. And the banana has nothing to do with it. Neither does he. My desktop looks like a war zone of radiation. You know, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen folders on my desktop. Seven times eighteen. All to do with radiation. And some of these folders got five, ten, fifteen gigabytes of material into it. Some got more than that. That's just one computer. Because I've been at this for so long, you know, I don't know how I can turn it off to walk away because there's nobody else out there that I feel that can pick up the slack. And I feel that, you know, I'm responsible because I have the ability and the skill to come out and challenge these creatures, these useless feeders, these monsters, these traitors, these bullshitters, these manipulating fucking freaks, these stupid insignificant maggots that are a scourge upon our society, that are predatory upon our children, that are predators in our institutions. For a handful of corporations. They can't even lock up the radiation for the last 50 years because they don't even try. 2.5 million dirty bombs a month in Iraq. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's 71 Nagasaki bombs, the animosity equivalent of radiation into your environment, into people's homes, in schools, hospitals. Do you think there's not some kind of effect, cause and effect for all that? You know, 80% of the babies born in Fallujah have no eyes and no nose and no mouth, no organs. Because of radiation, because of the uranium-238, just like in New Mexico. But it's okay, right? It's okay. Don't say nothing, Dana. Let, let the fuckers lie. Let them manipulate. Let them deceive you. Let the deception continue till the end of time. Because the end of time is coming a lot quicker than you think. A lot quicker than you understand, probably. That's why I'm here every night. Because we got to put an end to the ignorance and start solving some of our issues. we got, like, one of our biggest issues is building a sarcophagus, like the licensing agreement for these idiotic, private-funded nuclear power plants because they're private funded the insurance companies won't touch it the government just throws money away like they're doing in New Mexico knowing that this one of these barrels will breach everybody will have to run out and that's the end of it and then that will leach into the environment they don't care right it's just a handful of government employees a handful of upper management a handful of corporations that is destroying everything they're destroying the water, the land, the air, the creatures, the biosphere. You know, I'm not I'm not touching Fukushima, and I'm just talking about New Mexico. Do you think that when this goes up into the environment, it can't travel very far? Do you really believe stuff like that? Because you're 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 wrong. These particulates. Just because they came out of a hot fire doesn't mean they can't get up into the jet streams. They're supposed to never be in our jet streams. They're supposed to never be in our environment. They're supposed to never be used only twice, right? Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But they've been releasing radioactive materials into our environment and putting it into holes in the ground that they know can't contain it. That they know when they have one little tiny accident Everybody runs out and nobody goes back. Unless it's Fukushima where you're sending the homeless because you just don't care. I mean, you know, Dr. John Neal from the University of Oklahoma, he fit in just fine down in Fukushima. He would fit in upper management. 
He would be um, out driving around, pointing at the homeless. Hey, go grab that guy. Shanghai the fuck out of that guy. Bring him over to Fukushima. Let's get him his fucking rads. He'd probably bring his mother-in-law down there and give her the rads. Wouldn't say nothing. I mean, these people are got no conscience and they got no morals. And if they're willing to come out and lie about something so serious as a radioactive release and equate it with a banana, what else are they willing to do? Are they willing to rape your daughter? You can believe it. Are they willing to murder somebody to get away with what you're doing? You better friggin' believe it because that's what they do every day for a living. They're not your friends. They're not someone you can admire. They're not somebody you will want to look up to. They're not somebody that you will want to be in the same room. They're not somebody you will want for a neighbor. Okay? Dr. John Neal is definitely somebody I would not want for a neighbor. I would not want in my community. I would rather have Ted Bundy in my community than a creature like Dr. John Neal or anybody from the University of Oklahoma. Because they don't hold them accountable. And if they don't hold them accountable, that means the rest of them are doing the same shit too. They're out there lying in their specialized field all the time to assimilate this stuff into your environment. When their licensing agreement says it should never be released into the environment, it will never be released into the environment, yet it's constantly released into the environment, and these monsters that we turn to for a couple of facts equated with a banana, you know, that's what I think of them. They don't got any ground with me. They're walking down the road, and I can recognize them. I'm afraid of what I might do. Because... I don't think it's a bad thing to do. That, you know, stop and scream at him and call him a fucking monster is the, the minimum that I would do to that person. Or anybody like this. Who the fuck are they? Why are they getting away with this? Why is everybody putting up with it? Why don't people call him out? If there was a million people called him out today about that, Channel 4 News would never fucking do that again. They bloody well go get a nuclear scientist the next bloody time. And he wouldn't say the word banana. It wouldn't come out of his friggin' mouth. Because he knew better then. But when there's only a couple of voices out there. Right? They'll come and watch the video. But that won't change them. The only thing will change them is if people... If they get the blowback. That affects them immediately. You phone up the university, you send mails to the email to the university, you send registered letters to the College of Physicians and Surgeons saying, I want his degree recertified. Because he can't pass that. Oh yeah, he teaches it. But he can't pass it because he lies about stuff, you know, like bananas into his equation. You can't do that. That's not why he got the degree. If he was doing his tests and he said plutonium is like potassium-40, they fail him on that one for sure. But that spills over in everything else in his life. He can't have just one lie in this equation and then the rest of it's true. He's lying all the way through. Now, there you go. Just non-stop for 42 minutes because... And my computer jumped and died. Let me re-kick this and see if everything is actually working. Nobody knows anymore. Why? Why do you have a map that looks like a banana as a dispersal model from a TV station and then a minute later somebody's talking about bananas. I was like a banana. It's so disappointing. It's so heartbreaking. It's demoralizing. Every time I see it, and so all I can do is come out and make a video and have my two cents word. Because if they're going to get their two cents word out there to mainstream media and people might want to go looking for more, maybe, just maybe, some of their students might show up here and find out what these creatures are really like and hold them accountable. Ask them a simple question. Ask them, why did he say the words banana? When he says you can get you would probably get more radiation, you would get more radiation from eating a banana than you would from New Mexico. You can't get more radiation by eating a banana. You off-gas it. 
the same amount of backwalls. It's insignificant. I'd have to eat 29 million backwalls to get the same amount of radiation as a single breath of air from that plumes of smoke in uh, Mama Knox's video down below. But so that smoke's coming out and it's landing on the poles, it's landing on the towers, it's all over the ground, it's all over the building. These are extraordinary numbers. You were looking at 10 and 20 million backwalls per square meter minimum. You know, the average worker is supposed to get around five backwalls a year. It's so heartbreaking that once again, here we are tonight with another, as usual, university professor that's teaching students nothing but lies. And he's teaching the students that, and they're, they're not going to go and demonize people like me because they think they're right, because they think that their professor wouldn't lie to them because they don't tell them the whole truth. You're not trained to be a nuclear physicist for a typical student. You're, you're trained to be a nuclear assistant, even though you're a physicist. Those jobs, the big jobs, are saved for the inbreeds, right? The government's inbreeds themselves. We, we got a system that's supposed to work, and it does the complete opposite. The universities takes all their peer review academic studies and locks it up in the ivory towers. They give away the copyrights to everything you paid for. That was yours. You paid for that. So why is it locked away? Why do they lock away 4,800 peer review academic studies every day that you paid for? That's why they're so arrogant. That's why the University of Oklahoma is shithole. It's the worst shithole imaginable. I'll be sending my email tomorrow. I can guarantee you. Because I got to. At least I got to try. You know, and I'll figure out the best way to word it. How disappointed I am that he put the words banana into e equals mc square equation. And I would like for them to send me the information showing me that that's actually true. I know that sounds stupid and irrelevant and silly to ask such a strange question. But I just can't sit here and take it anymore. Making the videos is not enough. I'll still do it, but i got to take them to the next level. I was looking at his phone number today, and if I had the studio, if I had my scooter, I'd be in the studio. We're going to have to send that. I can't tell you what's up about that anyway. There's something going on. In a day or two, I should be able to tell you. Tomorrow will be a live bike show. Not a live show, a pre-tape show. Uh, electric bikes. And I'll break down how that works here in Canada and the United States. And each week, I'll do a little bike show, electric bike show, so people actually become informed and can make informed decisions instead of getting shanged high, like the homeless at Fukushima or the poor bananas that are being demonized in America. Ken Buesler does it. Jay Cullen does it. Dr. Brian Henley does it. I made videos about these people. The dummy from last night who taught at Oxford for 40 years, he does it. Because they got away with it for all this time. Because this is the first time in human history that we can hold them accountable. This is the very first time and only time in history that we have an opportunity to hold these people accountable and they got everybody terrified that the government is spying on them and that somehow or another your words are going to get used against you. Right? That's what stops people from doing what I'm doing. You should go look at some of my videos. And if that was true, you'd be wondering, well, how the hell is he still on the air? Because I've been at this for many years. I don't hold nothing back. They're too fucking afraid to come near me. They can't come and look at my stuff and try to figure out what they're going to do with me because they get educated. And their pains of conscience won't let them do that. You know, have I ever mentioned a story about Albert Haushofer? He was a Gale Luck a geologist in the University of Berlin during the Nazi war. And he started writing little articles uh, because he had seen his friends getting picked up by the Nazis and dragged away. And he started getting a bit of a following. So the Nazis came and smacked him over the head and dragged him away. 
And so Haushafa, uh the Nazis were really organized where they wouldn't execute you without you signing your confession first. And Haushafa wouldn't sign his confession. So when it got close to the end of the war, uh, they shot him anyway. And out of his pocket uh, fell a little settle. It was a piece of paper. It was written in the form of a sonnet. It was his confession. And I can't remember all the details, but uh, it basically went uh, Schultz uh, guilty. But it's not what you think. I should have spoke out more forcefully. Unhawa. More sharply. I should have called evil evil. And now I know what uh, I was guilty of. You're all going to come to that conclusion yourselves in the future. You're all going to be the house offers in the future. You are right now. Because you have to take that next step. You have to use your voices. At least an email, phone call, a short blurb, even a 30 second, I don't agree with a professor calling uh, radioactive materials the equivalent of potassium 40 from a banana, I think is egregious and outrageous and a, a complete misrepresentation. Send it to the university. I'll be sending these videos to the university. Don't get me wrong. My email the moral. Cause I got no shame. <laughs> I got no shame. You know, I do. But why should I be scared of these fuckers? Why should I back down? Why should I cower? Why should I not hammer away at these fucking creatures? Why? Because the NSA might come and get me, or CSIS might come and get me, or somebody might fucking kill me. Do you think that would shut me up? Do you think someone threatening me will kill to kill me is going to shut me up, stop me? Do you think somebody can buy me? Do you think somebody can persuade me, threaten me? You think again? I know there's a lot of people out there that thought that could never happen to them, and it happened to them. And they went on with their lives, and they've done very good, made millions of dollars and everything else. I don't care about money. I have been extraordinarily privileged, privileged beyond imagination, beyond anything out there. Probably one of the most privileged people you'll ever meet. You have no idea how privileged my life has been. I'm extraordinarily grateful for my life. And I, I, I can't walk away when there's no logic out there, when it's just a banana monsters out there. And now that I finally worked it out, what they're really doing and how long they've been doing it, and how cowardly they truly are, how chicken neck, the boot licking lap dogs that they actually are to the industries, to the handful of corporations, to corporate personhood. I don't care. I don't care. You can't threaten me. You can't intimidate me. Yeah, you can censor me. I'll find other ways. That's what I've done for eight years. That's what I'm good at. But I won't be silenced. I can guarantee you. It's just not possible. I have nothing to gain and everything to lose by being silent. I have everything to gain and nothing to lose by using my voice. That's how I see it. They have everything to lose by telling the truth. They have their pensions to lose, their job, their prestigious positions, their easy life. Right? Their waistlines. They got all that to lose. And they know it. They bought into it. Right from the get-go, they sold out. And they do it to their students. They manipulate their students. And then we got to argue and fight with them. And they come and demonize me. They ridicule me. They make fun of me. They don't pick apart my conversation. They don't pick apart everything I'm saying. They don't even try. Because then they might end up with a conscience. They spend their entire time... Trying to find ways to tell me to fuck off or shut up. Never say, Dana, you're wrong here and you're wrong there. No. Just come out and demonize me. Come in and say stupid shit. And run away like cowards. Like little chickens. Like little maggots. Like the University of Oklahoma's professor 
He's a big maggot. Dr. John Neal. He's a coward. He's a traitor. I said that enough times tonight. Well, we're up to 53 minutes. Let me come in and say good night to everybody. That's all I got. I'm, just, I'm starting to repeat myself over and over at this stage. Got the Bent Banana Award. Broken ass on there. You know, it's like kind of get close to my heart. <laughs> Am I still streaming? Because that looks kind of suspicious now. Looks kind of suspicious. Doesn't look like I'm streaming. It's got like the faded red, and this one's up here has got a bright red. I'm going to refresh that page to make sure I'm actually still streaming. Yeah, now it's red. What the hell was that all about? We'll never know. Let me say goodnight to everybody. That's what I'm going to do here. I'll be gone in a minute. We'll end up with like a 55 minute video. I'm going to pop that one up. Kill the sound. I feel like I'm friggin'. Hang on. Some people are probably saying, hey, Dana, there's something different about your picture tonight. Well, I got a different table. It's a little higher. Because I'm pretty short. So I want people to be able to look me right in the eye. I'm looking at you. I'm going to have... These cigarettes don't have 4,000 chemicals in it. They got no chemicals in it. Right? The EPA grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals. No environmental or human impact studies. Right? And so when you hear t people talking about, the, oh, well, there's not as much as the EPA's guidelines, tell them to shut up. Hi, John, Pam. Oh, shit, look at this thing go. Mickey, Larry, and Arell. I can't keep up with that. What the freak? Craig, Kevin, Numer. Oh, jeez, I can't keep up with that. I gotta light up this sucker. Holy frig. There's no filter on these either. Because a filter on your cigarette allows the particles, to, the smaller particles, to get into your lung. It's the biggest trick out there. And that particle goes through the lung of your lung, getting through the lungs of your brain, and you end up with tumors and growths, right? I can't keep up with, I can't keep up. Okay, folks, good night. I can't keep up with that. That's crazy. Well, I said hi to everybody at the beginning the best I could. I do come in and I read your comments. I am affected. I do source out everything you do say. I don't I don't disregard anything. You know, I triple, quadruple check all kinds of sources. Right? And then I incorporate it into what I do. Right? I, I don't I don't have any favorite nuclear people out there because I don't trust none of them. Every freaking one of them I catch is marginalizing or misrepresenting. They're good. They're telling all kinds of good stuff and then they tell outrageous, outright lies. And dare the nuclear experts. What am I freaking supposed to do? What do I do with that? How am I supposed to get around that? How am I supposed to look that person and say, okay, that was pretty good, but they lied here and they lied there and they lied there. How many times have you got to do that before you say, fuck it? Well, that's what I had to do with all of them. I can't stand it. It drives me insane. So I'm here every night. I'm driven. I'm driven every single night to do this. Because I have to listen to the lawyers all night long in lectures, all day long, in every article I read. It's complete and utter hopelessness. That we can't get a single honest university institution out there to call it like it is. To actually put it in the context of what we know is true. New Mexico has a massive friggin' release. That's a fucking fact. Don't let anybody tell you different. Get back in their faces. Don't take it from them anymore. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Probably won't be as cranky. I'm pretty cranky last night. But I had good reason, because I was a real big lawyer, just like that fricker tonight, right? We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. I'll be giving me a cup of tea, back in and read everything. We'll see you.